Hey friends, so that's it. The course is finally over. You won't have to suffer through my ramblings anymore. Uh, seriously though, I hope you enjoyed it. And just as importantly, I hope you learned a lot. Personally, I really enjoyed these lectures. I certainly learned quite a few things while researching materials and uh, articulating in a way that made sense, to me at least. To be honest, I enjoyed recording the video quite a bit less, so actually speaking over the slides. Still, I tried to make it as good as I could given the time constraints. In any case, I want to thank you for sticking with me until the very end, so congratulations! Uh, you took the time to watch all of these videos and you made the effort, and now hopefully you've learned something useful. So here we are at the end of the course. Uh, this probably won't be the last time you hear of compilers. If you hang around places where people talk about technology, be that Acre News or even the office water cooler, you're bound to hear some of the terms that we use in this course come up in the conversation. But what if you really like compilers and you want to learn even more? What can you do? Well, first of all, I highly recommend that you apply what you learned and you try to implement your own programming language, your own compiler. All of my students in Belgium had to go through this process as part of the course. It's so important that, in fact, this project counts for two-thirds of their final grade. You can choose to implement your language however you want. However, if you want to stick to the course as closely as possible, the easiest thing is to use the Atten library for parsing, Uranium for semantic analysis, and then I highly suggest you write a tree-walk interpreter for your language. Why run out the quirks, so an interpreter is always easier than a code generator as a first approximation. And then if you want, then you can add a bad code generator uh, as a backend. I want to stress two things. Uh, first, yes, you really should do this. If your interest is to learn a usable skill, then there is no substitute for practice. If, on the other hand, your interest is purely academic and you just want to understand how compiler work, then maybe you can skip it. Still, I think that it's a great way to have your understanding really uh, click into place. The second thing I want to stress is that the language and the compiler you produce in this way are a real language and a real compiler. In particular, if you do add a bad code compiler, then there is no significant difference between what you've made and the real programming languages that millions of programmers use every day. OK, say you've experimented with language implementation, you've made your own language. What do you do next? I mentioned before that advanced compiler classes focus a lot on optimizations and how to implement them. That can be quite interesting, but I think it's also very niche because ultimately you can make your language without coding the optimization yourself and just trust the GVM or LVM to do that for you. But speaking of LVM, that is the other game in town, and it's probably the most interesting thing to learn if you want to expand the breadth of your compiler knowledge. If you want to work in compilers, for instance, it could really be a, a good thing to know about LVM. I must admit that personally, I don't know very much about LVM. I've never used it. Uh, I still have a niggling suspicion that mastering LVM, so not just knowing how to use it, but really uh, understanding everything it does. I feel that if you master LVM, that involves most of the knowledge that you would get from an advanced compiler class. And said another way, you need to understand the optimizations to use them uh, optimally. I will put a link uh, in the description to the official LVM language tutorial. And I have had a look at that, and it seems quite interesting to, to follow that. Another thing you might be interested to research is how garbage collector work. That's especially interesting if you're curious about how language work in general. Of course, uh, the garbage collector plays a huge part in the, the functioning of garbage collected languages, which are most languages these days. So if I was giving an advanced compiler class, a garbage collector is definitely something I'd want to cover. And you can really go far down that rabbit hole because uh, basic garbage characters are really simple. They can be explained in a few uh, minutes. But they're also fairly inefficient. And if you are looking to reduce the performance impact of garbage collection, things start getting tricky. In any case, you should try to at least understand what a tracing garbage collector is. So it's sometimes also called a mark sweep garbage collector and what reference counting is. And also what the trade-offs are between these two kinds. So if you understand that, you understand uh, most of the important stuff about garbage collectors. Uh, maybe you're not able to implement a very fast garbage collector, but at least uh, you'll have the general knowledge. You might also be interested in how to implement specific advanced uh, language features. For instance, if you like functional programming, you might be interested in learning how to implement type classes or lazy evaluation, things like that. I don't really have any good resource to recommend for that, 
and you have to search on a per need basis. Um, if you can't find anything, just ask. There's a lot of nice strangers on the internet that are just waiting for your help. Uh, you can ask in this video, you can ask on Stack Overflow, etc. Finally, if you're interested in making your own programming language, you should also think about how to design your language. How do you specify it? How do you tie the concepts together? And for this, I would recommend a book called Concepts, Techniques, and Models of Computer Programming. It's written by my colleague Peter Van Roy, who, like me, uh, works at UC Leuven, and Seif Aredi from KTH Sweden. As the name implies, the book explains a slew of programming concepts, but it does so through to a rather obscure language called Oz. Uh, Oz, despite its uh, quite questionable syntax, is an extremely elegant language, and more importantly, it is specified in an extremely elegant manner in the book. If you want a masterclass in language design, while also learning about some intriguing programming paradigms, uh, this book is worth your time. It actually does even more, so there's a small section on garbage collector. It is very basic, though. And it could also give you some uh, language feature implementation idea. All right, so that's uh, quite long enough for parting words. But one last thing, if I may. I'd be curious to know what you thought of the course. So I'd like you to leave me a comment below and tell me if you enjoyed the course, or if not, if there's something I should fix. Uh, imagine I'm doing another course later. What should I improve for, for that one? And I would appreciate that immensely. With that said, uh, farewell. I hope you succeed in all your future endeavors. Remember to be excellent to each other and party on dudes.